So out of the many first round draft picks that the Oakland slash Las Vegas Raiders have selected these past couple of years, one has only played one game, but I think he might be actually a huge part of this next year's team. I think that Jonathan Abram could end up being one of the key pieces to the Raiders in 2020, even though he literally only played one game last year. He got hurt in the opening game against Denver, and we never saw him again for the rest of the season. But uh, he looked very interesting in that game. And also, you know, him being a safety, and it seems like they're going to run a lot of cover three, which means only one safety deep. And I think he could end up being that free safety, even though he plays like a strong safety in terms of how he hits. Uh, and, and, you know, as we know, in, in football in 2020, free and strong is kind of uh, the same. Uh, not not the same, but you have to play either one if you're going to be a safety in the NFL. And so I think that he could definitely be a guy who they have, you know, back there a lot. And he can end up being a very key part to this uh, team. And, you know, they've gone out and they've got, they got Arnett, they got um, Amukamura. So they've gotten guys who can tackle on the edge, but they might need someone who can stay deep. And I think Abram could end up being that guy. And, you know, I think a lot of the, how well uh, Vegas does next season could be reliant on him on the defensive side of the ball. So let's get into what went right and what went wrong in that first game. We'll start things off with this play. Uh, it's going to be a cover three zone. That's the coverage. Uh, they're going to have a receiver run over the middle. And so for, uh, you know, for Abram, he's right over there. He's in the middle of the field trying to take away that area. Uh, and so, you know, a Denver player is going to try to cross just past the linebackers, meaning that for uh, Abram, this is an interesting thing to see how he plays this. And watch how, you know, he stays back. The route's going to go over the middle. It is going to be a completion, but he kind of waits too long and takes a bad angle on this one. So this was a bad play from Abram. Uh, you know, not all these are going to be positive plays. Listen, he looked like a rookie sometimes out there. He did some things very well as well, and I will get into that. But this was kind of a rough a rough angle, and I do think that, you know, it does kind of suck that he wasn't able to get a full season of reps where he could really get those angles down because he can make some mis- he In fact, he will make some mistakes when he starts in 2020. He's kind of like one of those guys where it seems like I, I do sometimes feel like maybe my fear is that he's so naturally talented that he didn't really f- totally focus on fundamentals in certain areas, which does result in some mistakes, but... That being said, he's also so talented that he makes up for it. Uh, Like, take a look at this play, for example. It's going to be a running play, and that's going to be the blocking concept. So, the next closest unblocked man is Abram. So, assuming everyone on Denver's perspective makes their blocks, this pretty much could mean that this could be a pretty good run until Abram is able to run over and make the tackle. Uh, so, you know, typically when a safety has to make a tackle, it's not a very uh, good play for the defense. But watch how Abram moves in so quickly and delivers an absolute blow of a hit, which results in a pretty short gain, even though the fact of the matter was, you know, he was supposed to be in cleanup duty right there. And again, you could argue that's a risky play because if he whiffs on that tackle, it could potentially go for a touchdown. But you know what? He's kind of just saying, hey, I trust myself that I'm going to make these plays correct more times than not. And you might notice the one mistake out of 100 that will result in a touchdown. But you know what? I trust that I'll give us a much bigger advantage by, uh, you know, doing these things consistently. So that's kind of the player he is. He's that, you know, he's the the guy in baseball that just swings for the fences but hits enough home runs that it's worth it. That's kind of how he is. Another interesting thing about him is just his physicality. I mean, this is the guy who likes to play physical. You know, he he is that old school style of football player where he wants to hit people. He wants to make contact. This plays an example where this is actually man coverage. So, you know, there's only one safety deep and this time it's not him. So he's covering that one Denver Broncos player who's in the box with him right there. And uh, you know, what's going to happen right when this ball is snapped is notice how he just initiates this contact. It was right at the line of scrimmage, so it's not a penalty. And, you know, quite frankly, this is just a good, um, you know, just just an interesting way to go about this where uh, he's someone who he, he trusts his physicality more than anything. So if he gets an opportunity to get his hands on somebody, this is what he's going to do. He would rather be in a situation where he's fighting with somebody than where he's just trying to stay close and, you know, at no point was that route even close to open, so it works out, and then Abram fell afterwards. Abram, actually, that's one weird side note uh, I have to mention about this game, is that Abram fell like five times on, it, it was four times, actually. It was exactly four times he fell, uh, and so I part of that might have been, you know, the injury later on, although I don't think so. I think what it really was was just the field conditions weren't great, uh, and I don't, 
I mean, well, no one else was maybe, maybe there was a couple other falls, but it wasn't like as bad as Abram was. I'm not sure why he was falling down so much, but uh, kind of funny. Uh, he, he fell on quite a few times. I want to go back a second to uh, his, you know, big play making ability because this play is a very good example of him going out and making a big play. It's a cover two zone uh, and there's a receiver running around that's deep uh, towards the sideline. Now, this is cover two. I mean, you notice right now Abram is moving towards the sideline. If you noticed before I paused it, uh, he was kind of in the middle of the field. They were trying to... They're, kind of doing a disguise, trying to make it seem like it's a cover one or cover three, but it's going to be cover two here. But either way, uh, Denver's right on it. Flacco's right on it. And he's going to try and, uh, you know, fit the ball through that gap, which is just past uh, the middle of the field, but just in front of Abram. That's what he's going to try and do here. However, watch how Abram notices this, moves in quickly, and is able to deliver a hit to knock the receiver out of bounds before he's able to make the grab. Just you know, really good timing and just a really good aware play. And again, you know, he's he is that heat-seeking missile. I mean, I really do feel like he's the embodiment of that phrase where if he sees something, he's going to just, uh, you know, go at a, at a very quick pace towards him and there's no getting out of the way, so you better just brace for cover. I mean, uh, you know, he's just a... Uh, He's just a really talented player in that aspect. This play was actually a really interesting one, where it's going to be kind of a similar thing at the start. Cover two zone again. He's once again the player who's uh, closest to the bottom of the screen. This time it's a curl route, so a little bit different, but pretty similar idea. Uh, but there's going to be something very interesting that's going to happen here, is that Flacco is going to start to try and throw in that direction, but then because of pressure, he's going to move around. But watch how once he does that, now what you're going to notice right here is that so there's a Denver player who is, you know, looking like he could try to get open, but, you know, there's a Raider in right in front of him, so you would think that he would start running a maybe a little bit further deep, but he's also kind of in this gap in coverage as is. But you look at Abram, he's significantly farther away, maybe eight, nine yards away, but he's starting to move further back, and this is a bit of a curious choice, right? Like, why move further back? Why not move a couple steps in, or just stay where you're at and let the Denver player come to you? But what he's trying to do here is he's actually trying to open up that gap. He wants that gap to be wider so Flacco feels as though he can make a throw in that direction and then he can make a break on it and potentially intercept the pass. That's what he's trying to do there. He's basically trying to bait Joe Flacco, which I find very fascinating from a rookie who is playing in his first game. Now, this doesn't work out. Flacco takes a check down and that's all she wrote about that play. But, uh, you know, I think that's a pretty interesting really interesting idea there and you know again that's a third down too so it makes sense that Flacco might want to take a chance um he was just trying to bait him right there and again didn't work out but uh, I just find it interesting that he's willing to do something like that you know even in his first game so you have to figure the more he plays the better at those kind of mind games he's gonna get and he's also kind of using the unknown factor from him as an advantage in a sense where you might think okay let's it's, he's just a rookie let's attack him but he wants you to attack him. He wants to play. He's someone who wants the ball thrown in his direction in a big moment. This plays another crazy one where this is definitely something that if you're a Raiders fan, uh, which must be real, most of you watching this probably are, uh, this is going to be some of this interesting. Um, you notice I don't have the whole play on the screen right now, but what it is is it's a cover two play once again. There's going to be a run to the top of the screen, and Abram is in charge of covering the bottom of the screen. So again, you might be wondering, why am I showing this play? You know, it, this seems like it's going to be something that's going to be very difficult for him to get into the play. But just watch him. And watch how he's going to hustle this entire way. Hustle up to the top of the screen, just in case. Because the other safety did miss it. And then he delivers a big blow out of bounds. Unfortunately, Gary on Conley actually got hurt from that hit. So that, that kind of sucks for sure. But at the same time, I mean, you know, just a really good job by him of just hustling up there. And then doing his best to make a play, even if there was... A bit of friendly fire, you know, I mean, he was just, just doing his best to make the play on that one. Can't really blame him for it. Uh, and just a tremendous play, I thought. So, yeah, there's honestly a lot of things that I think Abram does does really well. Um, you know, he, he, he makes some mistakes. I'm not going to say he's perfect by any means. He definitely, he, he almost plays like a kid out there. You know, he plays like he's just someone having fun, just wants to go over and hit somebody, uh, which, you know, listen, there's some, there's some good about that, too. Like, there's the bad about, okay, he's going to make some mistakes here and there, but he almost reminds me a bit of, like, a, a the safety version of Brett Favre, in a sense, where he's just going to go out there and just have fun and do what he wants to do and try to make something happen, and you know what? If he screws up, then whatever, he'll get him next time. That's kind of his mindset, I think. Uh, at least that's what he plays like on the field, so... 
I, I just find it very fun. And again, with the Raiders next year, they've done a lot to make, bolster up that defense. Their defense was not good last year. They're doing a lot to bolster it up. I mean, like half the team, maybe almost more than half the defense is going to be uh, is, is going to be changed at this point. But one position that has not been changed is going to be Abram's spot. They're keeping Abram there. They're trusting Abram to be successful. And I think for good reason. I think that a lot of people kind of forget. They basically, you know, he's what they got for the Cooper trade. So they basically lost Amari Cooper last year for nothing because he was hurt all year. So for this year, they should hopefully finally uh, get some of the be able to reap some of the benefits from that. But, hey, that's just my opinion. What do you guys think about uh, Jonathan Abram and how good can he be? Because he, he basically is still kind of an unknown, but very interesting guy. Always love hearing from you. And, of course, as always, thanks for watching.